Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 28, compared with Revelation 9 and verse 20. Revelation 9, 20 says, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, <clears throat> yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Now you got a similar kind of wording there. It's a description. These things are created. They're, they're the work of men's hands. In, in Deuteronomy chapter 4, and verse 28, if you want to look back there real quick so you can see this, it says, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. And in the New Testament there in Revelation 9.20, God also says about these things, these devils that they're worshiping, they, they wouldn't repent of this devil worship. They wouldn't repent of worshiping these idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. See, that's why Ecclesiastes says there's no new thing under the sun. Because what's going on in Revelation and, you know, the, the revealing, the revelation of Jesus Christ there to John in the Isle of Patmos, he was seeing this happening in the future. We also read about it as it happened in the Old Testament back in Deuteronomy. We read about it in 1 Kings and Chronicles. Throughout the whole Bible, into the future, we know it's got to be happening right now. We know that there has to be people out there who are, who are praying unto a God that cannot save. We, there has to, it has to happen. Otherwise, you know, we're just living in a dream world right now. We're just living in the millennium right now, maybe, where people are just, you know, just doing great things for God and nobody's praying to a God that cannot save because we know it's going to happen and we know it has happened. I don't think so. I think the bridge has to meet in the middle because there's no new thing under the sun. That's good. If anybody replaces God with anything, it's a satanic wicked thing to do. And any any time that there is a desire that takes the place of our desire for God, that that's wicked, and that's the devil's work right there. That's his idea. You know, we've heard that priest a lot at church and everything especially. But anytime we get off God's path and get on our own path, we're on the devil's path. We're going the wrong way in this world. So anytime, you know, we think about going soul winning, we have a soul winning time set up, and then something happens and we would rather maybe watch football or basketball or do whatever, you know, that's taking your sights off of the Lord Jesus Christ and putting it on yourself, being selfish and, and going the devil's way. It's only the devil that would never want you to go soul winning or to miss a soul winning time or to stop early, or to start late, or anything like that. You know, the Bible makes those things very clear. You know, but right on par with all these things, you know, you've got the statues, you've got all the visible idolatry in this world, you've got all the paintings of our supposed Savior. You've got all that stuff in this world, but there's also an invisible aspect to this idolatry that's made. You know, and, and I think it's, if it's not worse, it's just as worse. Because anytime somebody who, who sees a verse in the Word of God and then they say something like, well, my God wouldn't be like that. You know, they're not, they're not engraving, you know, a, a little giraffe statue and bowing down to it. They're not engraving, they're not rearing up a Jack Piles, you know, monument or anything like that. They're simply saying, you know, there I hated them, I love them no more. Reprobate silver shall men call them, for the Lord hath rejected them. You read a verse like that, and it's like, man, well, my God would never reject anybody. My God wants... Queer is to repent of the queer. Come on, go to heaven. You know, my God wants to be like this. My God would never think that way. My God would never hate anybody. Jacob, have I loved? Esau, have I hated? That's what the Word of God says. Well, my God would never do that. They're not rearing up an altar, but they're worshiping Satan when they do that. That's right. They're praying to a God that cannot save. Anytime they go against the Word of God, which is the which is Jesus Christ, these words incarnate as He walked this earth, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Bible says these things over and over again. And if we if we hear somebody ever say, Well, my God would never send anybody to hell, they just made up another God in their head, and that's idolatry just as much as any statue, of any painting, of any kind of bowing down to me and, and kissing the feet of the, the Baalites and all this kind of stuff. It's the same thing. If not worse, it's just as bad. True. Look at Revelation 19. Revelation 19, down in verse 13. This verse is talking about Jesus Christ. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. It's talking about Jesus. It's talking about our Savior right there. And his name is called the Word of God. Amen. So anytime somebody criticizes the Bible, they're criticizing Jesus Christ. All right. You know, I, I used to be on YouTube. I used to have this account where we had all our sermons, all these really great videos on there and everything. You know, but I one like one of the last things that I received in the email inbox on that and everything was this guy who um, 
the older his older brother was the the long haired hippie queer Jesus on the the um, a banner for the Passion, the Chestnut Ridge, and all that kind of stuff. Garbage. His name that guy that plays that part is Cameron King. Anyway, his little brother Duncan King found those clips and our sermons and our videos and all that kind of stuff. And he decided he was going to write me this epic long email on YouTube and just tell me how wrong I was about the King James Bible being the Word of God. You know, I didn't waste my time by reading that kind of garbage. That's but I good. skimmed down over and I read enough over it to know that he was blaspheming the Lord Jesus Christ. That he was taking the name of our God in vain. That he was praying to a God that cannot save. Yep, that's right. right. When Duncan King goes to bed tonight, he's praying to Satan. That's right. That's right. That's right, too. And not only is it true on an individual basis, but it's true on a church-wide basis in some yep. cases. There's many prolific false churches out there today. And every single one of them that perverts the gospel of Jesus Christ, every single one of them that takes this book and tears it apart, goes back to the Greek and corrects it and criticizes it and says that they're better than it and they know better than what the Word of God says, they're praying unto a God that cannot save. Right, yeah. They're praying unto the devil. They're resorting to the devil's Bibles and saying that this is the Word of God and this is an inferior text because it's outdated, it's old, it's the and thou, this and kudus, and all this kind of stuff. We need to get something new. We need to get something called the unauthorized version, whatever. I'm not even sure what that is. It's a great master or something like that. But though anybody who replaces this word with this word is re replacing God's word with Satan's word. That's right, that's right. And he's been tossed out of every pulpit in the nation today. Perhaps not that emphatically, but still yet the point stands. It needs to be thrown out. It needs to be taken out. You know, people criticize us for burning the Bible, throwing it like that, and taking out the spices and whatever happened. Yeah. You know? But it doesn't matter. Whatever we can do to get our point across, it says there is only one God. There is only one true God of heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ. So there is another other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. There is he is he is exalted that, that name above every name. That's right. What's the same Philippians 2? And every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and every tongue could, should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's right. That's what it says. So it's, it took a minute for it to come to my mind there, but all across this nation today, any church that does that. And goes and takes this word and replaces it with Satan's word, is praying and worshiping and having a worship service unto a God that cannot save. Yep. You know, be not. Be, you, Paul said in 2 Corinthians, no marvel. You know, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Yep. Yep. You know, Joel Osteen on the television is Satan. Yep. That's right. That's right. You know, any of our false churches today, these reprobate false prophets, are doing the work of the devil. That's right. There's Satan on this earth. You know, he's not somebody who wants to look bad and, and to be portrayed as somebody who, who is, is wicked and vile and dirty. He wants to be somebody who looks good and is, and is attractive and is wonderful and sounds great. You know, be careful of any preacher who's, like, really smooth in their preaching. You know, prophesy unto us smooth things. That's what they prophesy to seats is what it says in the rest of the breath there. Yep. Be careful of that. We, we need to be sober and to be vigilant and keep ourselves out from these things. That's why I preached this sermon tonight. And also as a warning to be careful to never look at something in the Bible and be like, wow, God would never be that way. Wow, God would never do that. My God would never do that. You know, and anybody who says that and looks at a, at, at a verse in the Bible and says, my God would never do that, they might be right. They might be right. Because their God is not the God of this book, on this pulpit here this evening. 